Hello everyone and welcome to another Ends on Tech video. On today's episode, I will be talking about Microsoft lists and about the new feature that just landed into the platform that will allow you to easily create custom forms built in natively inside of your lists. So stay tuned, stay right there, and I will tell you everything you need to know about it. Before jumping into the technicalities of Microsoft list forms and how you can create them and share them with your users within your organization, first, let me tell you what are the problems this new feature solves. Forms always existed within lists. You always had the opportunity to share the form with your users. The problem with that approach was that you were exposing the entire list and the entire data to the users that were adding information to the lists because the form was part of the list and there was no option for you to ask for specific fields of that list without asking for all of them. So this new approach that you see here in the screen now allows you to share the form with users that don't have access to the list. You can have a list in the site collection or on your personal lists without sharing the list with anyone else within your organization. And still the users will be able to add information to that list. And you will be able to select what are the columns that you want the user to actually fill within your form. And you can create as many forms as you want within your list in Microsoft lists. You may be thinking about other alternatives to create something like this, like using Microsoft Forms and Power Automate. Well, but that was not natively built into the platform. And this new approach allows you to easily get all of this from one single location and allows you to share the form with the entire organization. So let's see how you can get access to the forms and let's see what you need to know in order to take advantage of this feature. This is how the form looks like and this is what we will be building in this video. The first thing that you need to do is to go to your list and if you already have the new interface for Microsoft lists, you will see the forms button at the top. When you click on it, you will have the possibility to create a new form. When you do that, you will have to provide a title for your form and you will be able also to provide more details about what this form will be used for and if needed instructions on how to fill the form or if this is a form for an event you have the opportunity to add more information about the event so for example this registration form will collect data from members of the organization to register them for an expedition and automatically it gets all the column types that you have in the list and it generates different fields for the user to add the information. But there are certain fields that I don't want the user to see or to feel when they submit their registration. That information is meant to be filled by someone from the organization and not necessarily the end user. So if I want, for example, to remove the guidance assistant or the assigned group payment status, all of that can be removed. And the only thing that you need to do to do that is to uncheck the options that you want to remove. Then if you want to reorganize or change the position of how the fields look like, you can simply move them using these arrows over here or more conveniently to see immediately how things will look like, you can drag and drop the items in the form so you will see how things will look like once you get them published. This is all great. This gives you access to what you've built before in the list. But if when building this form, you realize that you missed a column that it's really important for you to get within the form, well, you don't need to go back and add it manually to the column. You can simply click in the add new field and from here you will have single line of text, choice, number, date and time, multi line of text, yes, or no fields, person, hyperlink and currency. It does not support 
at this moment all the data types that you have in Microsoft lists. But, well, there is no need for you to go back to the back end of the list and add the column manually. You can do it directly from here. Add a title, a description, select what is the type of data that you want to collect mark it as required or not and once you save the form then it will add the column to the list schema so you don't have to worry about it other than this you can customize how the form looks like microsoft has different things that you can choose from you can create your own style by defining your background uh, here you will find a few uh, other colors and you can define also the theme color that will be then applied to the elements within the form for example here this you can see that this is applying the color to the icon over here so well I can pick a color that relates better with the branding of the organization one thing that I would like to see in here is the possibility to add company branding assets like the logo and the colors of the organizations because that will help the users to easily relate the form with the company and with the intranet where they are already working but well for now that's not available not a big deal you have still options here that allow you to customize the form in a way then you can also type the message that the user will see when they submit the form. If you want to add information about what will happen next, informing that someone will get in touch or an email will be received once the registration gets confirmed, well, this is the place where you can fill the, that information to inform the end user. Well, I'm fine with this out of the box message. And now what you can also do is preview how the form looks like and when you do this it opens the form in a new tab and you will see exactly what you've built but here be careful i did this mistake once make sure that when sharing the form you don't share the preview link otherwise the users will not get access to the form uh, to share the form, you, what you need to do is to go back to the form and click in the send form. And here you will not be sending it to anyone directly from this interface. What you will be doing is generating a sharing link. And that happens when you click in the copy link. And this is the link that you will then share or add to the quick links or to Viva connections within your internet from where the users will be then able to access to the form. So now if I open this link instead in the registration form, this will actually give me access to the form. I'm happy with all the customizations that I did, so I'm ready to go and I'm ready to start collecting information. And just to demonstrate how things work, let me start filling this form So with all the information added to the form, the only thing that I have to do now is to submit. Here you will see the message that was configured to be displayed to the end user once it's submitted. One thing that I would like to get rid of is the make your own form with Microsoft lists. I understand this is a new feature. Microsoft needs to advertise it, but it would be nice to get an option to not display this to the end users it feels like well it's not giving a professional look in my opinion to this whole uh, experience with the form submitted now let's go back to the list well i already have here four entries but well now refreshing the list you will see that there's a fifth one that was just added and when I scroll all the way to the right, you will see that the columns that were not available in the form are still here to be filled by someone else that has access to this list. So what I will do now is edit this in grid view just to simplify the process. This person specifically already paid, so 
they will be in the summit seekers the guidance systems will be daniel and this will be on the 18 and by doing this well now i can implement automating flows telling the person all the information about what i just filled here but well by doing this i'm completing the registration form that someone else added to the list but well, they don't see that this information was here to be added. And most importantly, they don't see any of the data that other users added while registering to this specific event. So let me exit the view. And now let me show you another thing about forms. And this is an important feature when you create a form like this. So imagine that you are no longer accepting registrations for this specific event. You need to close the form and there's an option to do that. You need to go to the forms once again. And as you can see, it tells you that this form is still open and to close it, to stop accepting responses, you just need to click in the three dots, stop accepting responses. It will inform you that people will not be able to respond to the form with the links that you shared. So you click in the stop accepting responses. And now when you go to the form, you will see a message and the users will see a message saying that we are not accepting responses at the moment for this form. Well, if you change your mind, you have the possibility to start accepting responses again. Let me copy the link one more time, open it, and the form will start accepting responses again. This is all great, but still there are a few limitations that you should be aware of. If you don't see yet this new interface for Microsoft lists in your tenant, you will not have this option. How can you tell that you already have the Microsoft list interface? Well, obviously by having the forms button at the top and the thing that you will notice immediately is the view selection that, that changed in this new interface and now looks like this. So if you have something like this, then you will have the new experience. If you have lists with custom extensions built with SPFX, you may be delayed on getting the new functionalities from this new version of Microsoft lists, but don't worry, it will come later on this year. So you will get also access to your custom forms. Another thing that you should take into consideration is that not all types of columns are available to be used with the new forms experience. If you have, for example, columns using metadata or lookup columns, those will not be available for you to use in the Microsoft list forms. So while building the list, and if you want to take advantage of this feature, make sure that you select the fields that are available for now in the form. Otherwise you will have to rebuild it using other types of data. So just so you know, in order to see what are the ones that are supported, uh, a good trick is to go to the form and click in the add new field. The ones that you see here are fully supported and will be displayed without any issue in your uh, form. One last limitation, but probably the most important one is that this functionality for now is not available for anonymous users which means that you will only be able to share the forms with users of your organization. If you want to share this externally, publicly in the web or with guest users, well, you will have to find other alternatives like using Microsoft Forms integrated with Power Automate, but well, make sure that you don't send the link from the send form to external users, otherwise they will not be able to see the form to add 
the content to the list. So this was everything that I had to tell you about Microsoft lists and Microsoft lists form, but make sure you subscribe because there's more to come. I will tell you more about Microsoft lists forms, how you can further integrate them with Microsoft lists formatting and with new formatting options that are available for Microsoft lists. So you don't want to miss those updates. So please hit the subscribe button. See you next time. Bye-bye.